Hello everyone, Kiki Cannon here with Cannon Studios bringing you a, another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Curve in Blender. Blender has been something that has been requested, so this is my first Blender tutorial. I would really appreciate any feedback, comments, or likes you could give me if you enjoyed this content and would like more because I know that there's a bunch of Blender tutorials already out there. So I don't want to make a bunch of videos if you guys didn't find it helpful or useful or it's not what you were looking for. I also have some other videos coming up on my sword and right now I'm currently working on the sheath to get that ready so that I can paint them together so I can continue showing you guys the progress on my Zelda costume for anyone who is interested in that. And of course if you have any suggestions just feel free to leave them below. I appreciate all your support that you guys have been giving me as I am slowly making my way to partner. So thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, starting off, I'm just gonna launch Blender here and make sure to have the newest update, which I believe is the 3.2.2, and I'm gonna be opening a general file. Um, I just have these keycaps from when I was working on some keycaps, but I'm gonna delete that so your page should look something like this. And I'm just going to press the, Z, the Z here, the Z, to just have this easy top-down view for right now to work with, okay? So we should be in object mode here. And we're going to go to add, down to curve, uh, the Z or curve. It's in there. It's really, really tiny. A little box is going to pop up below in the corner on your left-hand side here. It might have already popped up like this. If it didn't, you can just click on it as I did and it will give you the full menu. So with this menu, it only pops up once once you create the object. And then as soon as you click off of it, it does disappear. Um, however, all of these settings you can still do later, so it's not a huge deal if it does. So I'm just gonna scale up the radius here and make my object bigger. This is, you know, the align view and world view location, um, X, and if you want to do any rotations or locations. Basically, I'm not going to be doing any of that, so I'm just going to off-click here, and we have the curve here so you guys can see it. So we're currently in object mode, so just press tab to go to edit mode, and then you will see these different handles here. These are what we're going to use to basically control the curve. So if you've ever worked in Illustrator or you're familiar with Illustrator, it's very similar to the pen tool or any other tools like that, where you can click on a point, press G for grab and move it around as such. So it's pretty easy to um, maneuver. So if yours, if your um, spline is like mine where there's no lines on it to give direction, you need to fix that. And if yours does, then you're fine. You don't have to do this step. Um, mine does not. So if we go on this uh, drop down menu up here, uh, viewpoint overlays, if you go down at the bottom to where it says normals, we're just going to click this on and we can just raise it so you can see the spline here, which was hidden before. I'm not sure why that happens. Um, if, if, if you don't have them, there must be some kind of setting, but I do know how to fix it. I'm just gonna do active element so that when I do scale, I'm actually on the object, not on the uh, cursor here. Okay, so if you're curious of like what your work looks like, because right now you're just looking at these lines and stuff, right? Um, basically what we can do is go over on the right hand side where all the settings are. If you're a more visual person, this might be easier um, to see. So we can raise the depth here. And now you can kind of see your object. And you can either do round, which is what it's at now. You can add in an object, which I don't usually do that. You can also go to profile 
which if you want to do some like detailing things or any kind of filigree type things, um, basically you can play with the profile and the resolution. So I'll show you guys real quick here. You can click these different points here, maybe here, maybe here. And just basically like crown molding is a really great example. Um, if you ever look at crown molding at the hardware store and you kind of see the profile, it gives you an idea of, of what you're doing and like what it's going to look like. And so if I just spin around for you guys here, you can see that it's creating kind of different depths and such. And if you want these caps filled, just right above it, you can click fill caps as well as changing the resolution. If you want it to be a little bit more smooth. If you're doing a lot, I don't recommend going too crazy on subdivision or smoothing or revolution uh, resolution um, immediately. Like if you go really, really, really high and you're working with a bunch of stuff and you're really smoothing it and you have a lot of surfaces, it, be, it can be kind of difficult sometimes to move around. So I recommend doing some of that stuff um, last. So this is an option um, that you can do and you can kind of, you know, move it around in different shape. So if you want to add another one, you can do E or extrude and it will basically have the exact, continue the exact same patterning here. And what I like to do is we're going to switch tab to object mode. And in object mode, like if yours doesn't look smooth like this, it could be because you're in the flat shape. So right now it's smooth. So I'm going to go to flat. And if you want your curve to be more angular like this, you can also do it that way which is kind of what I used for the crown and different parts of the armor and shaped it. So you can choose to work with something more angular or something more smooth, it's up to you. So up here you have different options. So you can click this um, x-ray to see through it if you wanna see a picture that you import um, behind it. And I will add in a photo just to kind of show you guys what that looks like. All right, so if you wanted to see how that looks, if I just scale this up, um, I basically use these type of curves to create a lot of uh, Zelda's costume that I'm working on. So you can still see through it. So if I was tracing um, this, just press tab to go back to edit mode, right? And then we can go to G for grab and just kind of rotate this around. G for grab. And then just keep doing that. G for grab. And then you can kind of just take the curve here. Just doing G and you can slide it in. And just kind of move it around and slowly work with it. And the more you work with it, the easier it gets. And if you're already familiar with using tools like this, like I said before, in Illustrator, it might be easier. So we have it like this. I'm not going to make it perfect because I've already modeled this crown and I'm not, I don't really want to do it again. <laughs> but this is just going to give you a general idea of sort of like what I did for this piece specifically. Okay. So what we want to do is regular scale, you can move, you can move these, but you want to do alt, alt S, and then you can kind of bring it in to a point. And then you can do R for rotate, to rotate here, G for grab, to move this over, and then you can just keep playing around with it until you get it to look right. And you can use this uh, compass over here to basically flip around to make sure you're working in the right space. And after I get something flat, 
that's when I start moving it in three-dimensional space. You can also change the depth here. If you want it lighter or thinner, you can also do that manually. So feel free to just like play around with the different settings. Um, and then if you're not seeing what you're doing in profile, make sure you have the resolution up and you can do Alt S and scale it wide, Alt S, and you can do um, horns and stuff like that, you know, if you want horns, curves and horns is a pretty good way to go. Um, I have used the curves for horns before. And I always recommend, as I said before, kind of shaping it flat first, right? And tracing your picture or your sketch or whatever it is, or you can just freehand it if you feel comfortable, you know, freehanding it. Um, if you want to just play around and create your own design, then you can just keep moving it around. And if you want to even bring in like a head or something to work off of, um, it's pretty easy to get different uh, models for free. Um, I have a website I'm going to link because I can't remember the name off the top of my head where you can put in different measurements and then you can get basically your body kind of in a 3D model form.